Hey, it's Prerag and today I'm replacing the brake pads on a 2016 Polo GT to these 8E brake pads. I had been running Brembo brake pads for a while but they were squealing a lot lately and I wish to try 8E stock replacement pads. So this is the perfect time to do so. Let's get right into it. Step 1 is to loosen the lug bolts while the car is still on the ground. Step 2 jack up the car on a flat surface and remove the now loosened lug bolts. With the wheel out of the way it is a good idea to slide it under the car as a fail safe and if you have jack stands this is the right time to use those. With the car jacked up and wheel removed it is recommended to clean off your work area for any dirt or debris. I'm using a leaf blower here to do so. Specially make sure to clean your caliper off for any brake dust. With that taken care of, carefully turn the steering wheel till the caliper faces you for a comfortable working position. To remove the caliper from its bracket, we need to undo two 12 mm bolts. You can choose to remove both or just one and open the caliper like a clamshell and replace the pads that way. But removing both the bolts makes it easier to clean and grease the sliding pins shown later. With the caliper out of the way, we can remove the old brake pads. If the pads installed previously were not correctly installed, then you might face problems to remove the caliper as was the case with me. The pads are slightly different with their position of rivets on the backing plate and their orientation is important. The pads with rivets in the middle gets installed in the front or outer side of the caliper and the pads with rivets far apart gets installed on the piston side of the caliper. But in my case these were not correctly installed previously so I had to face one minor issue caliper would just not slide out because the piston was anchoring onto the rivets of pads which were not supposed to be there but I worked around it make sure to install them correctly With brake pads removed, we can remove the guides as well as the new pads come with new hardware. This is a quick comparison between Brembo and ATE brake pads. If a brake caliper or bracket is filled with brake dust this is a good time to give it all a quick clean with the brake cleaner of your choice before installing the new guides back on it is necessary to lube them with copper based anti seize in the places where the pads will make contact with them these small steps will make sure your brakes don't squeak or stick either The products I have used are mentioned in the description below. While applying this copper based anti seize, we need to make sure we wear gloves and that it is a thin application and not a very thick one. Just a light streak of this anti seize is enough to do the job. Thick application will only attract more brake dust to settle in. It is recommended to apply a thin layer of anti seize on the backing plate of brake pads as well to further reduce the chances of brake squeal. Before closing the caliper, we can remove these sliding pins as well and clean them up with brake clean. Thank you. 
After cleaning them up, we need to lube them with silicone grease. We cannot use anti-seize here as it, as it can degrade the rubber boot it goes into. Brake specific grease or silicone grease is recommended to use here. With a fresh set of nitrile gloves, we can coat these pins with a thin application of this silicone grease as well. After cleaning and lubing them, insert them back in and put back the guides as well. While putting it all back together, make sure to not get any lube or anti-seize onto the brake rotor or the surface of the brake pad. If you do accidentally get some on there, then clean it with brake cleaner right away. Otherwise, this can tamper with the life of brake pads and reduce initial braking bite as well. With parts cleaned and lubed, we can now install the pads. These are directional and can only be put in one way. As I mentioned, pads with rivets close together get installed on the outer side of the caliper and pads with rivets far apart get, get installed on the piston side. With pads in place, you will notice the caliper doesn't slip on easily because the piston is in its way. Now there are a few methods to compress this. The one I will be using does not involve any loss of brake fluid. With the help of a friend of mine, we designed and manufactured this very simple piston compressor. Just a bolt pushing onto a plate while threading through another plate. This is how it functions. You just put the old pad on the piston and place the piston compressor over it. One plate goes on to the old pad and the other plate sits on, sits on the other side of caliper. Hand tighten the tool to create some tension and when everything is in place, tighten the bolt to further push in the piston. Before pushing it in, make sure to open the cap on your brake fluid reservoir. Just let the cap sit there so no debris falls into it. With the piston completely backed in, the caliper will fit into its place like a glove. New brake pads will come with new 12mm bolts so if you wish to, you can replace them as well. Tighten them up properly and you will have your pads finally replaced. Just repeat these steps on the other side and you will be done. After doing the other side as well, check the level of your brake fluid reservoir. It must have gone up slightly. If you feel the need to do so, remove some brake fluid from the reservoir. Now it is time to put the wheels back on. Lower the car and tighten the lug bolts in a star pattern. Before driving out, we need to build brake pressure again, as the pistons are compressed all the way back. Give the brake pedal a few pumps and it will feel stiff within the first couple of pumps. After building brake pressure, it is a good idea to check around the calipers if you spot any brake fluid spilling, just as a precaution. If all seems well, you can begin to brake the pads in. The braking in procedure I generally follow is to find an empty stretch and drive to 80 km per hour and moderately brake to 20 km per hour, initially with light pressure and increasing the intensity slightly with every run. Avoid hard or emergency braking during this period and give the pads at least 500 to 1000 km before testing them vigorously. After a few runs of 80 to 20 or 30 km per hour braking, you can run the brake pads as normal avoiding emergency or hard braking for a while. A few points to note. I did not replace or skim my rotors. If you wish to get more life out of your pads, it is recommended to replace or skim the rotors if it is within the thickness spec. I did not do so because less than 3000 km ago, when I got these Brembo brake pads installed, my rotors were skimmed. I did not bleed my brake system for air. The method used to push back the piston meant there was no loss of brake fluid. Neither did we break any connection of the brake lines to introduce any air. So there was no reason to properly bleed the system. 
So this was all I had to share on the topping of replacing the brake pads on your Polo, Vento, Rapid, Amio and cars with similar floating caliper design. I hope this was helpful if you are trying to do this job on your own. If not, then I hope it was entertaining enough to watch. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.